On today's Baker matchup, we're getting better prints by using an arc welder. So on today's Baker mashup, we're going to be using an arc welder to improve our 3D print quality. Now I'm not talking about the kind that joins metal. I'm talking about a piece of software that is called arc welder that does an amazing job at approving your G code before you send it to your 3D printer. You may be familiar with the popular Octolab software, and if you've seen a YouTube video or a video on Instagram where 3D prints magically develop into a full 3D print, that Octolab software, the author of that also wrote this brand new piece of software called Arc Welder. Now what Arc Welder does is it takes the different points that are straight lines in your 3D print, because your 3D printer really just prints straight lines, and what it does is it takes that G-code and then turns them into arcs. So it reduces the total amount of G-code that is being sent to your printer. It also uses Marlin, SmoothieWare, all the different types of uh, software out there to use their arc functionality. So instead of the slicer creating circles by using individual lines, it is now offloading that to the uh, firmware and allowing it to go ahead and create arcs. Now, for those of you that are very familiar with Marlin, we talk about Marlin software a lot here. A lot of times people have seen arc support inside Marlin, but never really seen uh, how that works because slicers don't generate arc data out of the slicer. And that's where Arc Welder comes in. It changes everything in the way that 3D print G code is sent to your printer in that it creates arcs. And we're going to cover that in a little bit more detail here. But at the bottom line, we're talking about improving our 3D print quality. So I've got two prints here, and from this distance, you can't see it, but I'll show some close ups here. These are two couplers that I printed. One of them, uh, the traditional way by just slicing it in. Uh, Cura, and then after I sliced it, I sent it to Marlin. Now this print over here, which is much smoother, is printed after I've pre-processed or post-processed, depending on the way that you look at it, post-processed it out of Cura, sent it through Arc Welder, and then sent it to Marlin. Uh, it saves a tremendous amount of data. In some cases, uh, the sample prints were compressed in G-Code 95%. So from the data that came out of Cura, 95% of it was compressed down or removed because it created this arc data. And then I sent it over to Marlin. So that's a tremendous savings in not only speed of transferring things to Marlin, but it also reduces the amount of G code that Marlin has to process. And if you've ever tried to do high speed printing, like we've tried and done successfully with the X301 printer or any other Core XY build, if you try to get that high speed, you notice that what happens is you get a buffer underrun or basically the buffer is not able to keep up with the data that's coming in. So it, it requires Marlin to process far more data than the CPU supports. So that's why 32-bit boards and 32-bit CPUs are really more beneficial. So if you have an 8-bit printer, you're definitely going to want to watch the rest of this video. So with all that said, let's get to work. Let's take a moment to talk about how Arc Welder works. In this diagram, the first step is to look for three points along the toolpath and then determine if the arc created would be within the configured resolution. It then continues adding points while checking the maximum deviation. Once the maximum sized arc is achieved, Arc Welder ends the current arc and begins another one, and then the entire process keeps repeating until you reach the end of your G-code. You can see this happens almost instantly. Inside Octoprint, my test object was converted in less than a second, and my G-code was compressed by over 60%. Now let's talk about how to get up and running with Arc Welder. We're going to start with the Cura installation because it's the easiest one to do. Simply click the Marketplace link at the top and then from within the Marketplace 
scroll down to the Arc Welder plugin that was developed by Field of View. The plugin directly uses the Arc Welder library, which we'll cover in just a minute, and you can run the Arc Welder library directly. You don't have to run it from within Cura. So those of you that don't use Cura and prefer something like Prusa Slicer, you'll still be able to compress your G-code. Once the plugin is installed, you'll want to scroll down to Special Modes, and then all you have to do is click the checkbox for Arc Welder. This exposes all the different options available to you to configure the tolerance or the resolution for Arc Welder. I suggest experimenting with it a little bit to find out what suits your needs best. Now let's get this installed for Octoprint. We'll start by clicking the wrench icon and from there go to the plugin manager and get more. You'll search for the Arc Welder plugin or you can install it from the URL like I am because I'm using the beta version. This new beta version should be released about the same time this video publishes. Once everything is installed, you'll have to restart your Octoprint instance, but overall installing this in Octoprint is extremely easy. As I illustrated earlier, all you have to do is drop a file in and Arc Welder will kick off automatically and convert the file. But we're going to go ahead and look at the statistics for Arc Welder and we're going to configure it as well. Now, something you should note is down here at the bottom is the firmware compatibility. Now, once you've installed this, I suggest you run this check because one of the things I had to enable in Octoprint here was the G90, G91 influences extruder option. And I'm going to cover that now because once you run this firmware check, you may need to change this for your Octoprint instance as well. Enabling this feature is really easy. Click the wrench icon, then go to features within Octoprint and click the box that enables G90, G91 overrides relative extruder mode. From there, you're ready to recheck your firmware and make sure everything is okay. With all that done, you're ready to drag and drop your file into Octoprint and have it instantly converted. Larger files obviously will take a lot longer. Once you've converted a file, you can click the Arc Welder tab at the top and you can get the analysis of each individual file. By default, Arc Welder will create a file name with a .aw in the middle and all you'll have to do is click on that file and then click Print. Now let's talk about the command line use of Arc Welder. This has the advantage of working in Windows, Mac, and Linux. Being slicer agnostic, you can also use this to bake it into any scripts or applications that you see fit. Here we have former Lurker's GitHub page. And from here, we're gonna to navigate to the Arc Welder lib on this page. And links for all this are in the description. Now to download the latest version, you're going to want to go to the tags and from here you'll see that there is a releases tab. Once you click on that, you just need to scroll down and from there you can see the various releases for different operating systems. We're going to download the Windows version here and then we're going to unzip it. Google Chrome did give me a warning and I just told it to keep the file. After this, I proceeded to open it up and then we unzip the file, giving us a directory structure of both the libraries and the binary files where the Arc Welder executable exists. Here we are at the command prompt and you can see the Arc Welder executable and also the Arc Straightener. I suggest checking that out, but I'm not going to cover it in this video. So we're gonna do a simple conversion of the test ring G code that you see here. And it's simply a matter of giving it an input and output file name. I use the same AW nomenclature. And you can see here we compress this file 95%. Listing out the directory, you can see here that we took this from a four meg G code file down to a 441 kg code file. So that's a substantial difference in what you're transferring through the 3D printer. You can control the resolution as well at the command line. I'm gonna set this to the same value, which is the default of 0.05 on the resolution. And you can see our conversion rate is 95.3%. However, if I change this to 0.1, 
and execute the same G code, you'll see that it actually compresses it down to 95.4%. So you can play with these different numbers and get the best compression with still the type of quality that you wanna see out of your 3D prints. Now let's take a look at the quality. You can see here that because the 3D printer always does print in straight lines, that you always get a slight ripple effect. But the one on the left that you can see all the bumps in there, that is the one that was printed without arc welder. And you can see how much smoother the two on the right are. One is a 0.05 and 0.1 respectively. All of these prints were done with 1.8 degree steppers. Now, in theory, if you were using a 0.9 degree stepper, you could get some additional resolution that might improve this further. I was very impressed given all we did was run this through Arc Welder. Now let's get down to the nuts and bolts on testing tolerance. In my tests, I was able to print three different versions of these nuts and bolts that piece together. And in my testing, each one of them worked perfectly. I had no issues assembling the nut onto the bolt. Here's the nut and bolt before arc welder, and you can see the seam that comes out the same on both. But you can see the ripples that are caused by the stutter of the 3D printer when it's printing on this original bolt. The arc welded version looks much better. It's completely smooth all the way around with the exception of the seam itself. Performance was improved overall. You can see here that this print running at 300% feed rate stutters constantly from buffer underrun. And you can also see those vertical lines in the print like we saw on all the others. This is the unarc welded file. This print is a 400% feed rate based on the exact same print only run through arc welder. You can see how smooth it is generally going all the way around and all of those vertical artifacts that you saw are removed from the print ring. I found that you can run about 200% feed rates over the serial cable, but the SD card is really where it shines where I was able to get a 400% feed rate from the normal 60 millimeter a second settings. So as you can see, using Arc Welder is really rather simple. You've got a number of different options. You can use it inside Cura. If you don't use Cura for your slicer, you can use it either in Octoprint or the command line version. That's pretty much universal and it works on various operating systems too. So you're not stuck with Windows only or only Linux. There's a couple of different options as well. And links for all that are down in the description. So you can check out their page, download the software and get up and running with this video pretty quickly. And you can start improving your print quality overall. I know I covered a lot of information pretty quickly in today's video on how to use Arc Welder and how to get it up and running. And I just wanna say, if you're having a little bit of trouble getting it running, feel free to reach out to our channel Discord. We're over a thousand members strong and there's lots of people in there that can help you with this project or any other project that you're working on. And links to our Discord are down in the description. I also wanna especially thank former Lurker for his support in producing this video. It was great having him available to answer all of my questions and really help during some of the testing. I really encourage you to check out the software. And if you're not using Arc Welder, you may already be using Octolapse, which is another great piece of software he put together. Uh, this is a great project and it's even supported by LayerFuse. LayerFuse team is a, a Patreon supporter of Arc Welder because I feel that it's really a game changer in the 3D printing community, and I really suggest you check it out. So with that, it's gonna bring the end of today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to share and subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. I'd also love to hear if you're gonna be using Arc Welder down in the comments, and I would also love to hear what your test results are and your experience with Arc Welder as well. So with all that said, I wanna say thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.